back to my channel. I'm having a blessed day. I hope you're having a blessed day. Um, today I'm super excited because I'm getting ready to start my mushroom farm. It's a small mushroom farm. I gathered as many mushrooms as I could for right now because actually mushroom kits can kind of get expensive. So for now, all I have are, and I'm gonna go grab them right quick. Let me get, let me go grab them right quick and let you guys see which ones I have. A few moments later. Okay, so these are my mushroom kits. This is what I have for right now. Um, I used to own more than this. I actually have owned different kinds of mushroom kits, but I gifted them. And so now I'm gonna start from scratch. Um, I'm still happy that I gifted those because I wanted to give, I kind of wanted to introduce mushroom growing to some relatives of mine. So that's why I gifted them to them. Um, hold on one sec, I'm gonna sit these down and then I'll go into detail about what I'm getting ready to tell you guys. Okay, so I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with mushroom growing. As I said in my last video, I'm not talking about like psychedelic mushrooms. I'm talking about, you know, regular mushrooms that you eat, like the organic kind that you can harvest and eat yourself. So this is a pretty popular mushroom to grow. So that's why I'm speaking about this one first. This one is called the pearl oyster mushroom. And this is pretty easy to grow. I've grown this one before. This isn't the same exact kit that I had last time though because the one that I had was a little bigger than this one. Um, but you know, that's okay because these still grow a lot of mushrooms as well. And you can reuse these as well, which is a really good part about these, you know, as long as you do the steps correctly. I know I mentioned that I gave some of these mushroom kits away, but the relatives I did choose to give them away to, these people, they love mushrooms already. They, they already like mushrooms, so that's why I gave this to them. But anyway, back to what I was saying. You can get these kits from Amazon and they even sell these at like Walmart and stuff like that. I've even seen them, I think at Home Depot, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this is the Back to the Roots brand and you can find, you can even Google Back to the Roots and then, you know, click uh, shopping. You can click shop on Google and then it can even tell you what different locations you can get these Back to the Root mushrooms from. So anyway, this is the Pearl Oyster Mushroom and I'm going to show you guys the next mushroom that I'm going to be working with today. Okay, so this is the next mushroom that I'm gonna be working with today, which is called the Pink Oyster Mushroom, which the, the names are kind of similar. The name is kind of similar to the last mushroom I just showed you guys. The, I've never grown this one before. This is my second time purchasing this one. I believe I gifted this one, uh, one of these as well. And I did have another one of these, but I think it went bad. And so, you know, here's another try for me. So I can't wait to grow this one. Uh, what attracted me to this one was that it was pink. I kind of didn't know. I really didn't even know that they had pink like I didn't know they had colored mushrooms like that I didn't know they had pink ones and so I thought that was so cute so I wanted to try these and I wanted to see you know what they taste like and you know I thought it would be really interesting to you know see these growing because you know that see that really bright pink and that is so pretty so I wanted to see what those look like and taste like so this is the second mushroom I'll be working with today and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the third one Okay, so here's the third mushroom, and this one is called the shiitake mushroom. Um, I'm excited the most about this one because I've always wanted to grow shiitake mushrooms. And also, I'm kind of curious because when I got it, it was kind of already, it looks like it's kind of already, you know, got some mushrooms growing on it already. So I'm kind of curious to see what this looks like. I've seen online what it looked like, you know, at its natural state before the mushrooms were growing on there. So I'm kind of curious to know why there's already much, like it's, it, you can literally see it busting through the box. I've had these for a few days, so I'm guessing the moisture inside of the box, I don't know, but um, yeah, it's kind of already growing mushrooms. I'm not sure if that's mushrooms busting out of there or if that's the packaging, but I think that's the mushrooms. So I might open this one first, I'm not sure. I do want to show you guys one more thing. And here's the last thing I was going to show you guys. This is a mushroom tea that I've always wanted to try. This is called Chaga Tea and um, I got this from Amazon. I heard a lot of good things about this product. I'm not even sure exactly what, what it looks like um, as a tea. I'm not sure if it's tea bags in here or if it's like the loose tea, but I didn't even know that they had mushroom teas. Well, I knew they had mushroom teas, 
but these mushroom teas that I knew about were kind of like coffee blends. And this isn't a coffee blend. I've always seen coffees with mushrooms in it, not with teas. So I thought this was interesting. And you know, what I heard about it was interesting. So I wanted to try it and see what it tastes like. And I might go try this right now, actually, since we're talking about it. So I think I'm gonna go over to the kitchen and I'm gonna make me some chaga tea and see what it tastes like. Let's get into the video. Honestly, I'm gonna open it too to see if it has tea bags in here because it could be it could be like tea bags. Okay, and so it is tea bags. It is tea bags. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like on the inside of the bag. Very interesting. So the inside of the bag is brown, but that's not a big deal because that's just like the residue from the tea. The whole purpose of the bag is to just keep like you know stop the chunks from floating around and you know going down your throat. So I don't mind the residue from the actual tea going off into the bag. It actually, you know, it shows that they kind of didn't skimp on the product. You know, they kind of did what they were supposed to do. So I don't mind that. They're, I actually like this. I like that they're like this. Brewing instruction. It says the tea you brew is only as good as the water you use. So please use fresh water without chlorine or sulfur. I let it sit for about two to five minutes. I'll give you guys the health benefits of this tea. I decided to go and look at a doctor's perspective behind this tea and she says this tea kill, helps kills cancer cells. It helps reduce inflammation. It helps protect the liver. It enhances congestion and it reduces fatigue. So those are really good things and I will share more about that with you guys here in a minute. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and take a sip of this tea so we can see what it tastes like. Now I'm gonna mix it in because I know, up oh, there's the tea bag. What I do like about this brand is that the tea bags, they don't rip. They're not the paper kind. These are those like really thick material tea bags. So that's good, really good quality brand. So that's, that's really nice to know. Okay. So as you're getting ready to take a sip, you're gonna, if it seems like you're getting ready to obviously, well, because it's the scent is very coffee. Like it's, it tastes like coffee. So it's like a coffee and a tea mixed together, but it, the taste isn't there. Like it doesn't taste like coffee. The scent is like coffee. It's so odd. It has like a coffee scent, but the taste tastes kind of like green tea. You know, it's like you're, it's, it's almost like you're drinking green tea, but it smells like coffee. That's what it tastes like. It's pretty good. And the honey, I, you know, the, the amount of honey I put was perfect. I think this amount of water to this t uh, tea bag with the eight ounces of water, I think that's the perfect amount. I don't think you should go any over eight ounces um, or it might taste a little watery. You know, that's just my opinion. But it's really good. Now, can I drink this every day? I don't know if I can drink this every day because I'm not a coffee person and this reminds me of coffee. I love coffee though. I am, okay, I am a coffee person. It's just, I always run after the green tea for some reason. I just love tea. I love tea for some reason. I just like tea. But I love coffee too. So I guess this is perfect for me. This bag comes with 50 tea bags in here, which is really good because some of the big brands don't even offer that many tea bags in their boxes of tea, like even at the store. And I didn't even get this at the store. I don't think they have this in a st in stores, but they're on Amazon. So, you know, I found them on Amazon and I did, I, I kind of compared prices and I also compared reviews as well. I compared the reviews as well. And this one had really, it had nothing but good reviews on this one. You know, on a few of the other ones I've seen maybe one or two bad reviews. So there's not even that many brands that even have bad reviews on any of these teas like this. 
because it's pretty it's a mushroom you know so it's really like i guess based on like how they're packaging the product and stuff like that which the customers were just complaining about that but i have no complaints about how they package this product if i could i would even let them know that they did a great job with this because i really like this tea so yeah so that's chaga tea and then here's the brand right here again and yeah so this is the tea i got i'm gonna be drinking this tea for a while because it has 50 bags in here and if i ever change up teas or anything like that change up brands or anything like that i'll let you guys know or if i even just st um stop using it all around which i don't think i'll stop using it because it has such great benefits and i might even you know let my husband try it out and see if he likes it and if any of you guys decide to try chaga tea let me know how it benefited you and how you liked it Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take this bucket across the other side of the house. I have a table in the back of my house that I can use for stuff like this. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up this bucket right here. This actually came in handy. My friend Shayla bought me this with some gifts that she got me for Christmas. Well, hold on, let me go grab my shiitake mushroom kit. Okay, so like I was saying, I'm gonna go ahead and take this basket to the other end of the house and and I'll start from in there. Okay, so here's the table I was talking about. This is an old table that my daughter would do like arts and crafts and stuff on. So that's why this table looks like this. And I also had this table when I first started making like lip gloss and stuff like that. That doesn't come off and you know, it's okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start taking these out and setting everything up for this. Okay, it is a little chilly in here, so I went and put my robe on because, you know, it's cold in here. And I, I could have put a jacket on, but I just chose to put my robe on since I'm at home. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start taking these out. I think I'm gonna start with this. You know what? I'm gonna do this one last. So I'll put that one over there. Okay, so I'm supposed to let these soak overnight, so I'm gonna let these soak overnight and then we'll get up and check on these in the morning. And until then, we're gonna go ahead and open up the shiitake mushroom kit. It already has mushrooms in right here. But, I'm glad it has this. It has a bag with it. So I'm gonna sit that on sit that right there and put this on top of it. Until I figure out what I'm supposed to do exactly. It has like different dishes that you can cook with it. There's a picture right here. Oh, it's called shiitake noodle soup. Okay, so I'm gonna go read a little more about this and then I'll know what to do about this. It says, once the caps are one to two inches wide, pull the mushrooms out completely from the root base by hand. It says, pick them before your caps start to fully flatten. 
Okay, so I guess what happened was I opened it after, well, these aren't, yeah, they're fully flattened, but I'm thinking these are fully flattened because they were in the box still. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all these mushrooms off of here and then I'm just gonna start over. It says on there to also keep these bags because these this bag is reusable. So I'm glad I didn't throw it away, even though I could just, you know, could have just got it out of the trash bag. I'm glad I didn't throw it away. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove all of these and then basically start over. While I'm starting with these, I'll start fresh with this too. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these. just took those off and I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'm, I'm not gonna keep these you see how the top is kind of you know rotted a little see how that has mold on it yeah so these weren't grown by my hands you know so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and throw all of these away I'm gonna just throw all these away and start fresh so basically I'm gonna have to put this in water overnight as well with these and then so I'll put this in water overnight and check on all of these in the morning Okay guys, so it's the next morning and it said to let everything soak for up to 12 hours. I couldn't find anything big enough to soak this in because it's so big. So I found the biggest bowl that I could find and I just let them soak for six hours on each side. So I just rotated it throughout the night and I, I, let, I just ended up letting the whole thing soak. And so I think I believe that's good enough. So what it says to do is move it to a tray after I put it in the bag. You guys remember this bag? Okay, so I'm supposed to take this log out and put it in this bag and I'm supposed to let, allow it to get, I'm supposed to allow it to get humid. Okay, so it says after I soak it to place it in the bag and then once I'm done putting it in the bag, there's holes in the bag and it says to make sure these bag, the holes in the bags are facing upwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out and put transfer it into the bag and put it on one of these trays. And I don't really use this one, but I, I kept it so that I could use it for stuff like this. I have this as well. Um, I, have, I think I brought two of these in here. Yeah, I have two of these. So I might use these two for the other mushroom kits because I have two other mushroom kits that I need to check on. And I'll just put the log in this one. I guess it's like dried up water. But yeah, this is just, you know, I don't, I don't cook or anything in this. So, you know, this is like one of those old pans that I don't use. So don't mind the rest that you see in the bottom of it. <laughs> kind of made me laugh because it said that the bag should fit on the log like loose jeans so 
So that's what it said. And it also said, do not tie the bag. So once you put, you know, if you want to follow along and do this with me, or even if you're just watching this for, you know, for learning purposes or, you know, just for entertainment purposes or whatever, just to let you know, it also said not to tie the bag. So I put it in and it also mentioned to put it in a baking sheet. So it did say specifically to put it in a baking sheet. I know that you don't have to, but you know, kind of follow the instructions almost directly so yeah so this is all i have to do it also mentioned that you can keep this log uh, in your kitchen it says that you can keep this in your kitchen but to keep it away from direct sunlight so this room is very lighted so i'm i'm gonna probably end up putting these underneath this table and then when i check on them i'll pull, pull them out from under the table and then once they begin to develop then i'll probably leave them out on top of the table or i might just you know what i'll do i'll probably just get a box like those big boxes and I'll just place a big box over top of it like an Amazon box and I'll just place it over top of each contain each one of these and that way I don't have to put them underneath the table I think I'll do that that's easier access if you want to keep it in your kitchen on your counter or in a big cabinet anywhere but if you want to keep it in your kitchen you can because it does say it on the directions and you're going to want to give it 10 sprays so basically the goal is to keep the humidity high inside of the bag so you can begin developing the mushrooms so if you follow the directions you should begin to see mushrooms in about one to two weeks before you get full mushrooms though you're going to begin to see something called pinning which is like the little bitty heads on the mushrooms but make sure you save the bag so you can continue to keep growing your mushrooms you know you don't want to struggle trying to start up your new set of mushrooms so make sure you keep your bag and don't throw it away or anything like that that way you won't be having to use substitutes once the caps are like one to two inches wide which is in the directions as well it says you can completely pull them off of the log and harvest them which i hope to be able to do with you guys if you don't end up taking them out of the bag they can end up coming out looking like this Basically, they're going to just, you know, they're going to have too much moisture and they're going to be pressed up against the bag and it's just not going to have enough airflow. Okay, so let's move on to the next mushroom. This is the shiitake mushrooms. So I'm going to push that one up to the front right there. And I'm going to try to find me an Amazon box that I can put over here, which I know I have one around the house because I just did an unboxing. I want to find three that are the right size for this. So we'll go on to the next mushroom. So let me let me go grab that and I'll be right back. OK, so this is the pink oyster mushroom kit. And what you're going to want to do with this one is you're not going to want to do anything with this one for the first two days. So it'll begin the humidity on the second day and then that's when you're going to want to spray it. This one you're going to want to soak six to eight hours. What the instruction says to do is to place the bag back into the box. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to put the bag back into the box. So I'm going to probably leave it on the tray like this and you know that way i can get a better look at it i'll just do it like that and i'll keep the box instead of keeping it the mushroom kit inside of the box it says to add two to three tablespoons of uh of water to this per one to two weeks until you see baby mushrooms up here so we're done with this one i'm gonna go ahead and push this one uh to back you know so it can be next to the other mushroom kit so i did a little bit more reading on these mushrooms and uh i may end up even getting some mushrooms at the same time i get some on this it's just that these could possibly take a little longer so that's why they said one to two weeks but i do remember growing this mushroom before and i was able to harvest mushrooms within maybe three to five days if i'm not mistaken so it all depends on you know I, it just all depends on how quickly your mushrooms develop for some reason i just i feel like i'm gonna get mushrooms soon but the same instructions apply for the pink oyster mushrooms for this because i read the instructions and it said it, uh, the instructions are the same so this is where i'm gonna want i'm gonna spray at each mushroom kit that you're gonna get you're gonna put two x's on it like this and then you're gonna get a fork or this is what i used and you're going to and i'll demonstrate again you well i never i haven't showed you guys this part but what you're going to do is you're going to put little lines on the mushroom kits like that you're going to put little lines on it not too many and you're going to do that on each opening each little opening you have you're going you're going to put scratches and scrapes in there don't go too deep you're going to lightly scratch the surface and th so that's what you're going to do before you soak them 
but I've already done that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and set my mushroom kit up next to the pink oyster mushrooms over there. Okay, so these are the little spray bottles that they sent with them. The pink oyster, the pink mushroom didn't come with one of these, but the other one did. So I'm going to put the spray bottles with the kits that came with one. You can keep your mushroom kit inside for like a little display box, which is cute. It's just that I didn't want to do that this time, but you can keep them in the box. You do not have to take them out. I just didn't want them in there, you know, for video purposes. So you guys can see everything. So I'm going to put this green one with the one that it goes to. And then I'll put the pink or the pink mushroom I'll put that one with that one. That way I won't be confused. So stay tuned because I'll update you guys as the mushrooms grow. This is gonna be my first time spraying the log. So I'm gonna give it its 10 sprays. Now it says to give it two to three tablespoons. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a couple of sprays. That's what I did the last time. That's just water from when I took it out of the pot that it was in. I can just wipe that up. That's just water. Okay, so it is day three and a lot has grown since. I have not sprayed it yet, but I wanted you guys to see like how many small little mushrooms have grown in and they are pink. I think it's so cool that the mushrooms have already started growing and it's only been a few days. So that's the pink one and I wanna show you guys the other one. Here is the other one. Doesn't that look weird? Look how weird that looks. It looks rubbery. <laughs> That is so interesting. And there's some more small ones forming up here at the top. That looks so cool. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and spray these. And this is the morning of day three. And here is what the shiitake mushrooms are looking like. I haven't sprayed this yet either, but there's nothing here. Oh, there are little... There are some forming in right there at the bottom. You can see it. You can see some right there and there and right there. You know, you can see a little bit. Oh, and also up there. So that's cool. wow you know what you guys i didn't see that but look looks like there's a a big one back there you can kind of see one way back there see it whoa there are a few there's a lot there's a big one right there There's a big one right there and right there. Wow. Okay. But we're not going to take this out. I'm not going to take this out until until it's time for me to harvest off of these two. And then so when it's time for me to harvest off of these two, then I'll take this one out too. But I think that is so cool how there's how that grew so quickly. 
so I kind of skipped a day a few days in between and I was very busy the last couple of days but it did continue to grow and I did come in here and spray it a couple of times but I didn't update you guys in between but here is what they look like as of now and I do need to give them another spray because they kind of look like they're drying out just a little oh no they don't they're pretty they feel very moist so they're not drying out or anything i'm going to show you guys what the other one looks like and this is what the other one looks like these are so perfect these look so pretty and perfect but yeah you see how many is on there and i'm going to go ahead and check on the other ones and this is what the shiitake mushrooms are looking like and they definitely do look different from how they looked and whenever they were in the box remember when i opened the box and they were kind of white and smushed kind of you know because they, the box was kind of smashing them all up against the anyways they just were they didn't look right they didn't look like this at all so these are growing pretty healthy there's some big ones in the back way back there I don't want to mess with them too much, but yeah, that's looking good. Look at that. That's so cute. Look at those two next to each other. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and spray these. Okay, so it's been a few days. These actually look really healthy. I wasn't expecting for them to get this big. Actually, I think they turned out perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and start harvesting them. This is what it looks like. Looks like a little rose petal.
This is definitely not a huge mushroom farm, but I'm really excited about the amount of mushrooms I was able to get. I haven't processed them yet since I've harvested them, but I do plan to dehydrate them. That way they can be shelf stable and I can seal them in a mason jar. And that's what I've been doing anyway lately, even when I get them from the store. When I get them from the store, I try to get them in the big package and dehydrate the rest of what I didn't use if I cooked something in a previous meal. And sometimes I'll even like leave them in the refrigerator after I've used them in a previous meal. And then like if I see that they're getting ready to go bad, I'll just go ahead and dehydrate them before they go bad. But they have to look right, you know? If they have like mold and stuff on them, of course I'll go ahead and throw them away. But if they look good still, then I'll just go ahead and dehydrate them. That way they can last a little longer on the shelf. I realized that mushrooms are kind of pretty and I admire the unique shape and texture of them. I was absolutely amazed as I was harvesting these mushrooms. All the way down from the color to the unique shapes, it has a smooth side on one side of the mushroom room and then on the other side it has these unique little lines in between each groove and it feels like super soft it feels extremely soft i know one mushroom i wanted to grow was the lion's mane but i wasn't able to grow that one this time because like i told you guys i had gifted that to a family member because i thought that mushroom looked pretty cool too it's like a really bright yellow and I just, I don't know, I just wanted to try to grow them. So I'm gonna probably get one of those in the future. So hopefully I can get a lion's mane kit and go ahead and grow that one too. So that I can add that to my shelf stabled mushrooms. And I wanted to see what those tasted like as well. But I'll definitely grow some lion's mane some other time. And speaking of time, it's time for me to go ahead and end the video by saying thanks for stopping by my channel. I appreciate your time and I'll see you in another video. Thanks for watching.